Welcome back. It's SVSUCardinals.com talking about basketball season. This past year was an interesting year. It was a tough ride at the beginning, and then towards the very end of the season, it was a team that really caught fire, finding their way into the GLIAC tournament when not a lot of teams in their position would have been able to achieve something like that. One of our biggest reasons for that is the man sitting to my left. That is Mike Wells. Mike, BMW. Good to have you. How are you? Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Now, no now that the dust has settled on this season, what are you most proudest of? Um, just the toughness that we had to start off the season kind of slow, but then finish stronger because most people could have gave up, not want to come to practice, like gave up on the team, like turn it, turn on each other and everything. But we all set together. We all came in every day with a positive attitude, positive mindset, and we found a way to turn the season around and make the conference tournament, which it didn't look like we were going to do at the beginning of the season. So that was kind of a, a good thing. And, something I'm happy to be a part of. You know, you were kind of laying in the weeds for the first couple of weeks of the yeah. season. But that second half, though, incredible. Nearly 24 points per game for you, including that 44-point performance in that game against Michigan Tech, the double overtime game right here in Saginaw. What clicked for you in that second half of the season? Um, just having the mindset that, like, we have to turn this around because this is my last year and I wanted to leave my legacy. I didn't want to be remembered as a team that just like fell off. I wanted to make sure that our team was at least somewhere exceptional, like, I mean, acceptable, like being in a tournament. So I wanted to make sure that I gave my all and did whatever I could to help our team get there. And that's what really helped turn, turn my season around and turn the team uh, season around. We're here with Mike Wells. Now, you have some great coaches, but yeah. even the best coaches will say that they can only do so much. They need guys who are coaches on the floor. Yeah. And I don't want to speak for anybody, but I think it's a safe assumption to say that you were one of the guys that they had in mind when they would say something like that. No. So did you ever feel like that last season? You were working with a lot of young players. Uh, yes, I felt like I had a big responsibility, and that's why I felt like that I needed to make sure I set my game up because I know a lot of people looked up to me and they wanted – some type of leadership on the court or whatever, and I feel like I had to be that guy. And once I start being that guy, everybody started, you know, stepping up too and being a leader. Because we had, like, James, he started being a leader himself. And, like, DJ have his own um, leadership qualities. And then Fred would step up and be a leader. So everybody started stepping up. And I feel like it had to start with me. And when I started doing that, everybody else started stepping up too. We're here with Mike Wells. So what do guys that are freshmen have to learn in order to take those steps forward? Because a lot was asked, a lot of those young players last season. Right. But to become a leader, it's not something that happens overnight, but it's something that you can kind of teach as the season goes along, just like your coaching staff. Uh, I feel like the main thing they have to learn is how to be coachable and uh, learn from the coaches and learn from the players as well, too. So if somebody telling you something, just listen. And um, once you listen and everything, then give your feedback. Don't just, like, listen and then like turn away and just forget everything they said because some people would get mad if they're not um, like if they're if they're um, being told something they just get mad and just think they're attacking them but you just got to learn how to be coachable and just learn to listen that makes a, be a better leader I feel like if you learn to listen first. Is that harder for some guys considering most of these guys when they get to Saginaw have been the most dominant players on their right. high school teams on their AAU teams growing up to get to this point right. but now they have to listen to a little bit of Criticism at times, mm -hmm. but also constructive criticism as they try to get them to be better players. Um, I mean, it depends on the person. I know for me, it wasn't that hard because I've always been like a coachable person. But some people can have a hard time adjusting to it because they've always been that guy. And they've never really been told what to do because they've always been that guy. But for the most part, the people on our team, we didn't have that problem because most people were coachable. And most people wanted to get better and everything. So I feel like it wasn't a hard adjustment for the players on our team. We're here with Mike Wells, one of the most exciting players to watch, especially when he would get hot, especially in the second half of games. We talked about the 44-point performance, but when Mike Wells gets hot, it becomes must-see TV. Now, I've been dying to ask you about this because this has always fascinated me. What's it like to get into a zone like that? Do you go looking for it? Do you find it, or does it kind of find you? It kind of finds me because I try to get my um, – like get myself going in the flow of the offense. So I don't really try to force too much. But once it finds me, it like really finds me. I get in the zone, I lock in. I feel like every shot that I take going in, no matter where I shoot from the court. So it feels good to get in that zone. And uh, I had a couple of them this season, but it feels good. And then on top of that, my uh, my teammates and everybody, like they have confidence in me to take the shots that I take. And they don't really get mad or like, they just encourage me to keep shooting even if I do miss. So it kind of like helps me out too as well. What was your most memorable game from the season? 
my most memorable game of the season. Um, I would have to say. I would have to say the Michigan Tech, and not because I scored 44, it's just because we were down so much at the beginning of the game and we found a way to come back and win that game. So that was my most memorable moment of the season. Kyle Monroe, the reigning GLIAC player of the year in that game, had 50 points, and to be able to okay. beat a team when somebody goes off for 50 right. is pretty special. I believe the last time that we spoke, we're here with Mike Wells, you were talking about pursuing a business finance degree. Yeah. How's that going? It's good. I mean, I'm set to graduate in December, so I'm excited about oh, that. Yeah, congratulations. So thank you. Appreciate it. That's very cool. Mike Wells, one of the guys that you know will be successful, whether it's on the court, off the court, doesn't matter. Thank this you. guy will be that way. And Mike, BMW, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. That's Appreciate Mike it. Wells, right here on SVSUCardinals.com. Stick around.